Now that we've figured out transform passes and we are getting into layering our composure elements, let's now get a foreground element over the top of our real life element. Um, let's jump into it. The key concept in this one, key concepts. we're talking about mats or masks. A mat is, is kind of the virtual production term for a what you might call a layer mask in Photoshop. And what we're talking about here is alpha. Say you have your image and you want to mask out a element of it. The mat is kind of another layer that you add to this image that's going to be just black and white and it's dealing with alpha. If you've ever used PNGs or anything, the magic of those is that they have alpha, they have a transparency layer. So that's kind of metadata within the photo that tells it to be transparent. And a mat is basically doing that telling. It's telling you uh, with this code of black or white or a gradation in between, it's telling you where the image is transparent and where the image is opaque. So by adding a mat to another layer, you can decide exactly what you want to mask off. And that is what we're going to be using for adding CG elements over the top of real life elements. So cool, we've got our cine stream going, we've got our background element, we've got the layer over the top. We have a look at the render target, turn the alpha off, we can see that we have the DJ over the top of the 3D background. For an example, let's try and get this frog to be over the top of the DJ. So to tell our composite to layer this frog over the top, we want to grab the background element and we basically want to create a mask. So if we go add layer element, we can uh, grab a mat. We don't want this CG mat. We want the background CG comp mat comp element. And what we can see here is, so this will show up black to start with, but it's going to act as a mask. What, what we see here is we have an input and an output and a transform pass as usual. But what we want to do, we want to capture actors. We want to use this to capture our frog. So we'll add an array element here, twirl this down, and it's got this include, exclude. So we've only got a few things to choose from here. These are layers that I've already created. This is going to be looking for layers. So what you want to do is go window, layers, select that, and it'll come up here. And you need to add these actors to the layer. So you can, so I'll select these two. You can right click, add selected actors to new layer. I'll call this foreground elements. And we can we can go and add new layers to this. If you select another one and add selected actors to selected layer, you can do that. But you can also see the contents of the layer and remove whatever you want and go back. So we've got that layer set out now. So in Composure, in our mat element, we should be able to select this from the actor set, foreground elements to actors. Now this will come up white which is because it's done this thing where it creates a new camera straight away. But what we want is we want it to pick up this camera. So go back here, go camera source. Instead of inherited, go override and select the camera. Awesome. Now we can see we're masking this off. So this is to do with alpha. It's going to let the frog through, but not let anything else through. And we want this uh, layer to go out as its own render target. So as an output, we're going to create a render target, okay, render target and create new, put it in our compositing folder. I'm going to call this foreground mat one in case we have more. And awesome, we got this render target now. So we all, what we want to do is basically take these two render targets and layer them together to go into our overall composite. So if you remember, we go here, we've got our transform pass. That is this material here. So we want to layer these two into the material. So open up the material. So in our material should look something like this. We've got our foreground over our background. We want to now put everything else over this, utilizing this mask option as well. So let's put this as one of our elements. We now want to grab these two flat texture targets. These can be dragged into our transform pass. Uh, so this wants to go over the top of everything else again, the frog, but with this frog, uh, sorry, use the alpha on the RGBA to go over everything once again, but it's going to take the RGB of this and use it as the mask. So now to break this down, we've got our background, which is our CGI. We've got our foreground, which is our DJ. And then all of that is going to have another layer, which is everything again, but with just the frog masked out. That's all going to go into the emissive color again. And what we can see here is that it's the wrong way around. So there's a couple of ways you can change this. Change this from holdout to garbage mat, and that's going to flip that for you. You could also change this from include to exclude. It's quite nice to think about this, the black always being the see-through element, the white being the element that's uh, kept in the mask. So now in our layer, that's looking good. We got our frog masked out. 
can save that. And in our overall DJing comp, amazing. If we pilot this, check out our render target that we're sending out. It's looking pretty good, output out. I'm gonna track this out and just show you that we can now move the camera in real time. The mask looks a bit weird when you move the camera, but we're gonna be dealing with static cameras for now anyway. So when we hit play, look at that, awesome. Now we've got our DJ, we've got our background, and we've got our frog masked out over the top. If your character is looking a bit anti-aliased around the edges here, it could be because in your foreground mat, when you've created that texture target, it might come in at 250 by 250 automatically. So upping that resolution of that, of that mat, of that mask, that will give you a much cleaner edge. There we go, much cleaner edge now. Looking really nice. So that's looking pretty good for now. We've got our background element, we've got our DJ on top of that, and we've got the frog in the foreground. Super cool. And when we hit play, we've got all our nice shadows, all our light bouncing amazingly. So uh, I think you can guess what we what the logical next step is here. We wanna be doing some green screening to really situate this DJ in the space. So next up, I'm gonna go through color keying and we'll figure that out in the next one.